Rabbi Wilhelm, Shalom Aleichem. Aleichem, Shalom. Were you part of the Sheva Brachas we had? It's beautiful. It's so beautiful, so nice. You should host I, a lot of Simchas amen, here. Amen, amen. And um, celebrate also with Hetevis. You usually tell me to cheer up. You sound like you're, are you tired? Did you work today? Did you, what, 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 what? You've just Hashem with Simcha, you know, you have to work. Simcha doesn't tire you. <laughs> anyway. Depends. I I uh, I have a, I I I had the privilege of seeing your father-in-law over here. Very nice. And he was able to forbring the rosh, and he was telling me a private story that happened. Maybe oh, you could, here, uh, you, here you go again. The lies. Maybe okay, yeah. you could uh, verify this. He basically yeah. told me behind the scenes of your shidduch with your wife. Uh-huh. And what's the behind the scenes? Yeah. That you're a very wanted bacher. You Bingo. everybody wanted you. Yeah. And um, his wife. And also another lady, they were fighting over you, and it was such a, an extreme fight that they had to go to a rav. And the rav basically said that the eight says like to cut you in half, and this way everybody's going to be happy. So the other lady said, no, 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 you can't cut him in half. It's not menschlich. And the other lady, she basically says, yeah, cut him in half. So that was to be your mother-in-law. So, oh, <laughs> this is the real mother-in-law. Oh. Is that a true story? No, it's not. <laughs> Why would you? Nothing about the story is true, and why do you make up stories? Anyways, in this week's parsha, we we live with the reunion. Why are you so uptight? What's going on over there? Uh, yeah. Listen up. Why are you? Uh, we you live with, with the final reunion between Yosef and his father. After over twenty years not seeing each other, can you imagine the excitement that they get to see each other? Anyways, so at, right in the beginning, when Yosef sees his father. And they, he introduces himself. He says all his great accomplishments. He says, Samani Elikim Lachol Mitzrayim. That Hashem has placed me as a master to for all Mitzrayim. The question is, we're talking to Yaakov Avinu. You think Yaakov Avinu cares? That's impressive that he became a master. He became a, a ruler of Mitzrayim, a, a, the filth of the world. What did he? What did Yosef really, really mean? So the Hela Geruzhna says. That the word Samani Elikim, Laodin Lachal Mitzrayim, has to be interpreted slightly different. Samani Elikim, Samani, I place Elikim into, into uh, in, uh, uh, I, I spread that Elikim is the Odin Lachal Mitzrayim. That's what he means. That even in Mitzrayim, I, I teach people how Elikim is the Odin Lachal Mitzrayim. In other words, spreading Yiddishkeit, spreading. The mission, the, 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 what the Eibishter is and how the Eibishter controls the world. And that impressed Yaakov, that even in Mitzrayim, his son was able to do that. That's very impressive. So after Yaakov and Yosef meet, and Yaakov, uh, Yosef is giving his father a uh, plan where they should live. So the Pasuk says, You should live in the land of Goshen, so I will be close enough to you and your family. Excuse me, after not seeing him for 20-some years, why are you sending him to Hudson Plots? Why aren't you putting him next door or in your palace? Why are you sending your father away? So the story is told about the Taz. The Taz, that when he became the, the, the Rav in a certain community, he tried as much as possible that his father should not come visit him. Because he was afraid that if his father comes visit him, visits him, there will be a question of Kibbut Av, because his father will stand up for him, or maybe he won't get, it will be too busy, he won't be able to honor his father too much. So he, he was trying to avoid his father coming to, to visit him in his city. Others interpret the same as over here. Yosef, out of great respect for his father, knew that if he puts his father very close by, and everybody has to honor Yosef because Yosef is a Mishnah Lamelech, Yosef will not be able to serve his father, the Kibbutz of, as proper as needed. So he says to his father, I will give you your own place, your own place in Goshen, and over there I'll be able to service you, I'll be able to serve you the way the Torah expects how a fa- our son uh, should show honor to his father. I'll tell you a beautiful word somebody shared today by the Shevard Brothers. We just had a beautiful Shevard Brothers. You can even see the leftovers there. See? So the, the Torah says that last week's Parsha that um, uh, Yosef uh, was about was a challenge with an Avera, and what stopped him was he the most him. He was able to see his uh, the vision of his father and that stopped him. So somebody asked the same story happened a couple of weeks ago with Yehuda. 
and Yehuda and Tamar, and Yehuda didn't didn't uh, make it through. Why didn't Yehuda have the schus to see the, the Musta Yekne Shalavim to stop him from doing what maybe is not proper? So somebody suggested the answer that being that the relationship between Yosef and Yaakov was different than the relationship between Yosef and Yehuda, the relationship with Yosef and Yaakov was a very external, I shouldn't say external, Yehuda was a powerful man, Yaakov was his father, but it wasn't, it wasn't a, a so lovey. Uh, whereas by uh, y- Yaakov and Yosef, there was a tremendous love. Yaakov loved Yosef, he made him extend his passim. So it was much easier for Yosef to be aroused or, or see the vision of his father, and that stopped him. And the lesson the person said was a tremendous lesson. He said that, that you, have to, you have to teach your son with love, and by doing and, and having that relationship, it's always going to have a permanent effect on the children. Just a couple of days ago, somebody said a very, a, a very similar word. He said a very interesting, by the Akeda, by the Akeda it says uh, that the Abishta calls out to Avram Avinu and says, Kach noaz bincha. So Rashi says, uh, and, and Avram Avinu says, Hineni. So what does Rashi say? What does Hineni mean? Hineni means, Lashen Anova, being humble, and I'm giving myself totally over. So somebody po- pointed out, Hineni is not only said to when the Abish to call Avram. The same Hineni we find is when Yitzchak called his father Avram, Avram, Avram also responds in Hineni. And this teacher said a phenomenal, phenomenal word. He says the same devotion and the same instant uh, respect or the instant response that you give to the Abish there, you say Hineni, that's the same type of respect or response a father has to have to a child and try to ha- help him and do it mitachanovavishiflus and be ready to help. And when you do that, you'll be very successful in all your chinuch. Beautiful. Thank you.